Welcome to the second course, and I'm really glad you're with me today. Um, before we get started, I'd like to do a little review of what we talked about last time, because I think it's really important. It's uh, something I podcasted about recently, because just to me, this is a really important question that we need to ask ourselves. A lot of people talk about write, wanting to write a novel. Um, they'll tell you that, oh, there's there's a book inside of me. There's a novel inside of me. Or my favorite uh, statements, I have a great idea for a book you should write. My answer to that is always, well, if you have a great idea, then why don't you write it? Uh, I'm not, I, I, if you had a great idea for the next great American book, uh, why would you, or, or the next great novel, why would you give it to someone else? That makes zero sense to me. We talked about the author journey and how most authors actually make less than fifteen or less than five thousand dollars a year. That sounds depressing until you realize that uh, if you're heading into the world of writing because you want to make money, uh, you are seriously misinformed. But that is the wrong goal to have in the first place, anyway. So why do we even want to write if the money's not really there? At least not initially. Yes, you can build up to it. Simple. It's in our DNA. There is a part of us that uh, needs to get to the computer to write, needs to get to a piece of paper to write. If you put a piece of paper and pen in front of us, we're going to write a story. It's just the way it is. Remember I gave you that, that uh, easy worksheet to fill out on the question of why. Once you better understand your why of writing, it's going to be easier for, reach your, to, to, for you to reach your goals. Take that answer that you gave yourself and print it out. Tack it up to the wall, tape it to your desk, put it somewhere where you can see your why. It's going to help you. You can revisit it every once in a while to ensure the why statement has remained sort of on point. The why gives you your your power that is your your gasoline in your tank for writing um, it's going to remind you of why you're writing in the first place we also talked a little bit about different types of literary vehicles that uh, are out there that you can use everything from the micro pieces all the way up to the the novels and the big super novels and that kind of thing um, today we're going to move on to something a little bit more practical uh, what, what do you want to get out of this course? Uh, let's go over a few of the goals I have for you during the seminar. Uh, we are here to tackle practical considerations to writing, the things that you need to really keep in mind as you move forward in your writing life, the things that you don't think about <laughs> until they suddenly become a problem. I I'm not going to tell you how to write. I'm not going to do that. That's not my job. I really want you to think about the other aspects of writing. How are you going to get to build in time? And I'm gonna I'm gonna hit on time quite a bit this seminar because everything sort of is built around this idea of time. What do you do with an already packed schedule? Uh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the drivers in that decision making process and find ways to make it happen even in a schedule that looks like it's not gonna allow for it. I have two worksheets for you. Yes, two. Um, you don't have to turn them in if you don't want to. You can certainly turn them in. I will certainly comment on them just like I did the Y one. Um, it, it talks more about, it examines more, these two worksheets examine more about how you can find time in your schedule to make things happen. And these are really just designed to get you thinking about it. It's not like a, something you're going to hand in and I'm going to give you a grade. It's just something for you to consider. Before we get into the weeds, I want to ask you something that is not to judge you or make you feel bad at all. So don't feel bad about it. This is only really a, reminders, a reminder for you. Are you writing? Any of you who follow me on Facebook know that I occasionally post my numbers. Uh, how many words I've made happen that day. I had 3,000 yesterday. I think I had 2,000 today. I don't expect you to reach those kinds of numbers. As a matter of fact, I don't expect you to compare yourself to me at all. I tell you, don't do that. 
your goal here is consistency. Every day, writing uh, for the amount of time that you can you can scroll away. If that's 15 minutes a day, and I'm going to keep using 15 minutes as an example, but I'm just pulling it out of the thin air, but that is your time. That is your butt in seat time. Butt in seat, hands on keyboard. Um, that is what we mean by consistency, right? From here on out, I want you to start thinking about those times that you can isolate when you can get that writing done, that time to make it happen. You would be surprised yourself how much time you actually can. If you set a goal of 15 minutes and you do it every day and you do it consistently over the course of a month, you're going to find that that 15 minutes turns into 25 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. It just starts sliding that way. Um, especially when you're in the zone, you find you start to find better ways to do things. If we can all agree that we more or less have a workable why statement, let's move on from there. Um, talk about those considerations that, that I keep keep dancing around a little bit. There are a few things that you should keep in mind as you start down the path of writing, um, your path of being an author. If you are writing already, congratulations, you can call yourself a writer. Uh, an author is just a way of saying that uh, you're a writer that lets their stuff get seen by someone else. Um, a writer is, it's just, a, it's just a word that means you're making words happen on paper. Think about that for a minute. It really is kind of a useless word. As much as we would love to just plow into putting words on paper, uh, think about things like yourself. People don't like to do that, but are there natural detractors from writing to getting your writing goals met uh, that are out there in the world? Are you president of the PTA, head of two councils at work and the, the scoutmaster? It's a lot in one package. It's a lot to ask of yourself. Um, so consider, I said 15 minutes and we're just gonna use that as a monolithic block of time. If you're inserting 15 minutes into your schedule that is just going to be writing, well, that's okay, but there's only so many 15-minute blocks of time in your day. What falls? What gets taken away? What aren't you going to be able to do now? Um, maybe that is time when you are unable to go to a soccer game or, or do something you like to do. Writing may only be a hobby for you. Have this very real conversation with yourself about uh, how you're going to get things done. If you are making this a priority, and you should, um, you've taken the priority to come this far. Make it a priority to write. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being a hobby writer, by the way. Uh, I've known authors that only write on the weekends and they produce one novel a year and they're very, very happy with that and they do extremely well with their one novel a year. Uh, I'm assuming that since you paid money for a course, a seminar, you're going to want something a little bit more out of your writing life than just simply a hobby. Um, if you want to succeed to be succeed in the industry, indie, if you want to succeed in the indie publishing world, maybe you have a traditional publishing career eventually. Um, keep in mind the level of commitment required to do that. Uh, it's going to take blood, treasure, tears. Yes, tears. You're going to cry sometimes uh, in the pursuit of this successful writing career, since successful author career. The second point I want to bring up is deciding what success looks for you. Years ago, I had a friend... Uh, have a friend. He, I say had a friend. I still have a friend. He and I talked about what does success look like to us. There is a preconceived notion in, in Western society that success means money. No. Um, I am truly happy when someone tells me they enjoyed my book. That to me is success. Sure, I would love to sell a million copies of my novel. 
novels, but um, that may not happen. So what am what's going to make me happy? What's going to keep me moving forward? Because believe it or not, those little tiny successes will go very far in keeping you moving along in the direction you want to go. When you really don't feel like it's, it's, it seems to be cyclical. When you don't feel like writing, somebody will come along to encourage you. Who knows, maybe that why statement will encourage you to, to keep writing. Um, really have a conversation with yourself about this time element, though. I can't stress that enough since timing is the only equation we cannot change. We can bring our laptops with us. We can bring our notebooks with us. We can, we can scribble chapters on the back of napkins. We can do all kinds of things, but we cannot change time. It marches on whether we like it or not, and, uh, and we can't get away from that. Uh, if you're listening to this right now with one earbud in your ear because your kids have suddenly become quiet and you're suspicious of what's going on, uh, the dog's barking, you haven't figured out dinner yet, and um, you've got a sales call in an hour that you're unprepared for, setting reasonable goals for yourself on what you're going to be able to do in a year is important. Probably not five novels, if that's the case. You may want to figure out, uh, realistically, how much time you have available in that scenario and work from there. Not to say you can't do it, you certainly can, but five may be unrealistic for you with all these different commitments going on. What are you going to, like, like I said before, what are you going to be willing to give up to make that happen? You, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you're adding more onto an already packed schedule uh, and end up losing your mind in the process. Goals are important, but you cannot set goal upon goal upon goal upon goal uh, until you've maxed yourself out. It just doesn't work. So be reasonable, be honest with yourself, and set those goals that are attainable as you attain your goal. Um I was saying uh, to somebody recently, you know, when you when you have a goal of 15 minutes a day and you achieve that over a seven week period or a seven day period, and then you maybe up it to 20 minutes and you achieve it for another seven weeks, you're going to feel far better than you will have if you sat down and wrote 10,000 words in a day because you achieved a goal that's sustainable over a certain set period of time. So, um, that's something that you should really consider is uh, what can you do? Um, 30 minutes over 365 days a year is about 180 or so hours of writing. Think about that. What can you get written in 180 hours of writing? That's, that's a good amount of writing. So, you know. Consider your goals. Uh, next thing, you should know your family. Remember uh, when I mentioned the baby screaming or the kids getting too quiet? Uh, well, also consider the rest of your family. I am not talking about letting them shape the amount of time you're going to write. No, you have to really be the driver in that seat. But you, if you have a family, they have to be partners in this enterprise. You can't do this alone. I know there's a fictional notion of a writer sitting there all by themselves with a candle in a lonely room, you know, hu you know hunched over a, a parchment with a quill in their hand, but that's not reality. You have to have a support structure in place. Now, I'm using family in a very broad sense. Uh, we have close, close uh, friends who are also very supportive of what we do. They are just like family. But they have to understand what you're doing. Believe it or not, your biggest detractors are always going to be your family. The people will say, oh, that's really cute. Um, uh, that's such a nice hobby. It's not a hobby. This is a commitment I've made. Um, but you have a high chance of failure if you can't get your family on board. So consider talking to them, being real with them. Discuss your goals. Discuss what you want to do. And, uh, and that's going to make a big difference in your success or failure. Um, believe it or not, they can also be your biggest uh, cheerleaders when you really don't want to keep writing. Uh, one of my better selling novels right now, The Megorian Chronicles, actually started out as an episodic story that I was telling about 
a, uh, a young girl that gets sucked into space accidentally and uh, she has to become a space assassin to get home. Started out as Haley the Space Assassin and now it's the Begorian Chronicles. I'm working on book three now. The whole reason that, that uh, I wrote that story to begin with and kept writing the story is because my wife wanted to see the next episode every time it came out. How do you ensure your family uh, stays on board when really you're required to lock yourself away in a corner of your house for, you know, for a while every day? Like I said, bring them into the process. Engage them in the process. Let your kids pick the minor character names, um, no matter how silly they might be. It, it can be fun. Get them involved. Uh, make sure to thank them in the acknowledgments because really without their support, there's no way you would possibly write your novel in the first place. Um, these are considerations that are very real, real ones. Um, make sure you're firm and clear also with them. Tell them that writing when the writing light comes on, you're not available. Um, maybe this means your spouse has to take your children to somewhere else. Uh, maybe it means you ask your, your, your son to put on headphones when they're playing video games in the other room like I have to. Um, these are important things. Let them know. These are important aspects of your life that you have to do. Be firm. Uh, do you, you definitely have to get your family's buy-in if you want to be successful. Hope. Oh, and I'm feel like I've hit the nail or hit the uh, uh, beat the dead horse here a little bit, but it's true. Um, besides, they won't actually know you need to be left alone if you don't tell them. So make sure and let them know. Uh, remember when I said I could write a book a year? Well, consider that I'm also figuring in an hour of writing amounts to about three hours of editing and polishing overall. Editing is a lot of work. Uh, but I also run a podcast called All Things Writing. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. Uh, you'll enjoy it. I do a lot of interviews with authors and that kind of thing. Um, that requires a script. That requires preparation time. Yes, it's a good amount of work all by itself. But that's all writing time, too, because when you're writing scripts, you know, you are actually writing. But I've also made a commitment that eventually I want to make writing my full-time job. Do I meet my writing goals every day? No. Uh, cars break down, um, people get stranded, uh, power goes out, I get sick, I'm not immune from all these things, and, uh, that happens. So, when that happens, I don't beat myself up about it. Don't ever beat yourself up about not meeting your goal. Don't promise yourself you'll do more the next day. Don't do that. That's a surefire way to, to shoot yourself in the foot. Don't do that. Uh, a lot of times I find that uh, I end up making up for what I miss anyway later on in the week just by virtue of, you know, being up early in the morning. I get up early in the morning. Uh, I squeeze extra time in when I can to help, uh, help keep me on track. Uh, back when we talked about figuring out what you wanted to write, I purposely kind of steered clear of the idea of how you get the writing done. I did that on purpose, by the way. I wanted you to not even consider putting uh, fingers to keypad or, or, or pen to paper or anything else or quill to parchment or whatever you're doing. Um, because I didn't want you to consider those aspects quite yet. I wanted to keep them right here in terms of um, when you have decided, let's say you're going to write historical fiction. That requires a lot of research time. So how does that figure into your schedule? Okay, now I've asked you to give it 15 minutes. So now you've, give it, get a give. now you've got to give up an hour to go to the library, maybe on the internet. A lot of things you got to do. Um, I know a writer who uh, lives in Baltimore, and he spent time researching one of the books by driving all over the place in the East Coast to get used to the locations he was going to use in his book. Yes, that's dedication. And it's also necessary to be authentic, to be accurate. 
So even before you get serious about putting a pen to paper, think about uh, the research time required as well. So that 15 minutes may turn into 45 minutes a day just to get your research done. Uh, how about writing when your spouse is away and you are single parenting it for a week while they're off on a business trip? So what do you do? do you bring a notebook with you everywhere you go? Take notes? You know, stubby, stubby pen, uh, stubby pencil and paper still works just fine. So that is one way you can accomplish that mission as well. When you get home, uh, you can dictate. Dictation is a perfectly good way of capturing the storyline. You can do that anywhere uh, with, if you've got a, a cell phone and a little microphone that you like to use, that's simple stuff. Um, it also will help to fill in the blanks. Maybe when you're sitting there at the playground and your child is playing on the swing set or something, that's when you pull out the microphone and you do some, some work then or the notebook you bring with you. Most importantly, uh, think about when you write best. I do my best work in the mornings. I just do my brains on full power, ready to go. Um, but I'm also, you know, I also tend to wake up early in the morning. I know some people that work well into the night. Um, they'll go to bed at four in the morning after a night of writing. I can't do that. Um, I need, I need my beauty sleep. Obviously it's not been working. Um, but you, you really should consider when you're at your best writing. Um, I also consider in my schedule, there are days when I just can't write, uh, Thursdays being one of them, because I have another hobby, which competes for my time. It's a hobby that I've made the decision. I'm not going to give up. There are literally a gazillion things that can run up against your writing time and make it difficult for you to get those, uh, words on the page. So this section, I'm going to ask for uh, the following homework. Again, you don't have to turn it in if you don't want to. You can. I will certainly take a look at it and give you my feedback. Um, see the worksheet. I want you to think about when you have time to write and what are the familial, social, and other obligations that are going to get in the way. Maybe the considerations are the same every single day. That's fine. Um, consider maybe setting that clock an hour earlier. I also want you to think about how you're going to deal with some of these considerations and maybe slide them a little farther to the right. Maybe get them out of your schedule so that you can do what you have to do in order to get the writing done. Again, if you, uh, I'm giving you permission to not compare yourself to other writers. Don't worry about if your friend who's writing over here is spending uh, four hours a day writing or your other friend over here writes 3,000 words a day. Don't worry about that. It's not important. Uh, what is important is what can you do. How do you make it work? And um, hit your goals. If you don't hit them one day, don't fret. It's fine. These things happen. Uh, it doesn't mean you failed as a writer. It just means that day didn't work out. The next day, pick up the banner and run with it again. I'm giving you permission to forgive yourself, essentially. This is not an easy process. It really, really isn't. And we're talking about reprogramming the way you do things. So keep that in mind. Um, if you have not already done so, I want you to start looking around Facebook uh, at people who write similar genres in what you want to write in. Um, find a writer's group. If you like romance, find romance writers. There's Romance Writers of America, I believe they're called. If you want to write uh, horror, the Horror Writers Association if you want to write, um, if you live in Virginia, we've got the Virginia's Write Virginia Writers Club. <clears throat> there are plenty of organizations out there, and you can become friends on Facebook, and you can find all kinds of like-minded people to bounce ideas off of, encourage each other. It's important. This is not a solitary thing. Work together, okay? 
Um, now, more, but more on that actually in course four, because we're going we're to talk a little bit more about that kind of thing. So I'll see you in the next session where we are going to talk about um, writing a plan and how to stick to that plan. All right, see you then.